Greetings, my gremlins. Welcome back to another video taught by a moron where I teach you something simple, but I do it in a really dumb way. For some reason, you guys love it. Today's video, I'm gonna be doing something that a lot of people have kind of wanted. I'm gonna get you started with hitboxes in a combat system, but just getting you started. I'm not gonna go too far because video length, but in this tutorial, you'll leave knowing how to do hitboxes, how to do attack animations, and a little bit of you know, local script to talking to server script nonsense, whatever the hell that is. But yeah, let's get right into today's video. All right, now technically I'm cheating. I have a full place already built in studio right here, which has all of my stuff. And I'm just going to copy that because this, this tutorial is a bit more complicated. I don't want to, you know, draw it out. Normally I just wing the videos. So I decided to just plan this one out. So it's, it's smooth now. Before we even get into the programming, we have a few things we need to add. So because of the way a combat system works, when we hit something, so I'm just gonna add a little, a little dude. We're gonna need the dude too. So add a little block guy. When you hit him, it's going, it's coming from the client. You want to damage that dude's humanoid. So if I just go into the client and I just say, Hey, make this dude take damage. It will look like he's taking damage, but on the server, this dude's unscathed. So on your screen, you're going to kill this dude. And then for some reason, you're going to get jumped by the air because on his screen, he's not dead because client needs to replicate the server. So instead of replicated storage, we're going to use a remote event and I'm just going to name it combat event. We're going to use this to replicate things from the client to the server so people can take damage. And next, I'm just going to add a folder and name it hit animations, which is basically just going to be a list of animations for when the player clicks. It will, you can cycle through punch animations just so it's a little, you know, neat and looks fresh. You don't want to have all the same animation. So inside of here, I'm just going to add an animation and name it hit one. Now we'll come back to this with a proper animation later. Now, inside of server script storage, we'll add a script. We'll name it hit receiver because we're going to be sending things from the client to the server script. And then on the client, You'll want to add a local script. So I'm going to put this inside of starter character scripts and name it hit handle. doesn't really matter where you put this for a neatness. We're just going to put it inside the player. But like if you drop this into storage UI, all of this will work. Reason I know this is because I programmed all of this in the starter UI like a true intellectual. So, uh, yeah, we're going to ignore that. We're just going to pretend I didn't do that. Anyway, you are basically all set up. So let's get into programming it. So first I'm going to program the server script. So I'm going to add a variable for that remote event. So I'll do local combat event equals game. Oh my God. <laughs> Got replicated storage dot combat event. And now I'm going to detect when the player's uh, character is added so I can add their hitbox because I don't want to just rely on the uh, players like, I don't know, human root part. I want to add a dedicated hitbox so we can remove it from creatures that we don't want to hit without having to do any crazy filtering. Sorry, that was a mouthful, but basically I'm gonna do game dot players dot player added connect function order. Then I'm gonna do player dot character added connect function char. Then I'm gonna do local HB for hitbox equals instance dot new part. Then I'm gonna do HB dot can collide equals false. HB dot parent equals char HB dot c frame equals char dot humanoid root part dot c frame hb dot color equals color three dot from rgb two five five three three which is just going to make it a red hb dot transparency equals one i'm going to do hb dot size equals char dot humanoid root part dot size then i'm going to just make the name be hitbox so hb dot name equals hitbox and now i'm going to weld it to the character so i'll do local wc for weld constraint equals instance dot new weld constraint char wc dot part zero equals char dot humanoid yeah humanoid root part then i'll do wc dot part one equals hb so basically if i set the transparency of this to be like 0.3 which, by the way, before you even begin working, uh, make sure you save your game. I'm just going to save a copy of this. I'm going to keep it titled Untitled Game because I'm really lazy. I should have changed that. Actually, I will. For video. Nice. Okay, go to Avatar and make sure it is 
R6 for this tutorial. You can do it R15, it's just that it's a lot easier to animate R6 than it is for me to animate R15. So for now, just make sure I set the R6. So I changed the transparency. When I join, you should see a Z fighting red thing on, like on my chest. There's our hitbox. Pretty cool, right? So now we just have to use that event. We just need to make it so whenever that event is fired, it will tell the game, hey, hurt the player. So, oops. I'm just gonna do combat event dot on server event connect function. And I'm gonna add a few parameters. Player damage thing hit. We're just gonna take what was hit and we'll do local entity even with thing hit if entity then local hum or humanoid equals entity dot humanoid then we'll just do hum take damage damage now, this might be confusing i promise i'll explain this but basically whenever this is fired on the uh, client we'll choose how much damage we want to do so the first parameter on the client is by default the player so it will tell us what player fired it and then damage we'll set the damage on the client and thing hit is whatever the player hit so if the player hits an NPC or another player, that player is automatically thing hit. And if it finds the humanoid, it'll make them take damage. So now we'll just program the uh, client. Now we get to the part that's gonna be kind of a mouthful, the client. I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get started with our variables. So first, of course, we want the player. So local player was named up players dot local player, local char equals player dot character, local hum for humanoid root part equals char dot humanoid root part we're gonna get this service called debris which basically lets you add something to it like hey i want to delete this cube in three seconds after it spawned debris system you don't have to do cube dot i mean cube colon destroy you can literally just let that system handle it it's pretty cool for things like hitboxes in my opinion i'll, I'll show you how it works so local debris debris local debris 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 equals game not wait for child we gotta use whoa game get service debris 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 however the hell you say it local attack db which we're gonna need later this is a default a debounce just to detect if the player attacked so we don't let the player spam false local anti-spam equals false this is basically just two countermeasures you'll see why we need this now i'm gonna get the hit animations so local hit animations equals game dot replicated storage wait for child hit animations and i'll do local combat event this game that replicated storage wait for child combat event now i just want to get that hit animation so i'll do local hit one equals hit animations dot hit one local uis for user input service which we can actually put this at the top it's really important this is how we will detect if the player clicked so we'll do local uis equals game get service user input service now this looks like a mess this is a good amount of variables so let's add one more actually let's add two more i lied we're gonna do local times swung equals zero and local hit one anim equals hum dot animator load animation hit one forgot the t there there we go Basically, this right here is just gonna load whatever this animation is. We haven't done it yet, but when we do it, this will just automatically let you spawn it to the character so you can make the character have it their punch animation. I'm just getting all this out of the way. Now we gotta make a cool function to actually create the hitbox. So we'll do local hit, uh, local function, create hitbox, source, damage, length. Basically, source is gonna be wherever the hitbox is coming from. Like, if you wanna set the source of it to be a sword, the hitbox will by default be the so like it will parent itself to the sword you'll see it's a really i'm really bad at explaining this but it'll be a lot easier to show all right so let's get to making that hitbox so we'll do local hb equals instance dot new part source hb dot can collide equals false hb dot c frame equals source dot c frame hb dot color equals color three dot from rgb and we're gonna do the same 255 three you're probably wondering why I'm adding those 3-3. It's just to be special. There's no reason to add that 3-3. It just makes the color slightly different. It's like my own unique twist on the color red because my ego is huge. Anyway, 
HP dot transparency equals 0 0.8. I want to slightly be able to see it just so I can make sure it's working. And I'm gonna do HP dot size equals source dot size times two. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger than whatever our source is. And in our case, the source is gonna be the player's right arm. Because we're gonna throw a right punch. You'll see. Now let's add the weld constraint. So local WC equals instance on new weld constraint HP WC dot part zero equals source WC dot part one equals HP. Then we'll just do debris, 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 debris. Add item HP length. So basically the way this works is we're adding the hitbox we just created to the debris service. And after it waits the amount of length, which is whatever this parameter is, it will just delete it. No script needed for it. No like pass dot wait this destroy. No, it just will get rid of it on its own. It's pretty, it's really handy actually. Now we just need to detect when the hitbox has been touched and then fire that uh, combat event. So we'll just do HP dot touched connect function. Whoa, I don't know what that was. All right, connect function hit. hit. Hit dot parent, find first child box, which is what we made on the server. And you'll have to put that inside of each player. I mean, each NPC, if you want the NPC to be killable, I'll show you how to do that. Basically, if it detects that hitbox, then if anti spam double equals false, then combat event fire server damage hit dot parent. And we'll set anti spam to true. Now this is stuck true, this will fire, and we'll do whatever amount of damage we want. All that's left to do is make it so when you click, it throws a punch, hurts the player, and lets you throw another one. So before we get too far, let's go to our little dude right here. I'm going to show you a hack for giving him a hitbox. Just go to his rig, duplicate the torso, name it, hitbox, delete all this useless junk. Make the hitbox whatever color you want. I'm gonna do this color for hitbox. Change that transparency a little bit. And just add a weld constraint. Zero. And, whoops, can't do it like that. But let's attach it to the torso. So yeah, we have our hitbox. It's, uh, it's welded to the torso. All I have to do is turn off can collide. And now this guy has a working hitbox. So when you hit this, it will take damage. Now we just need to do the animation. So I'm just gonna add another rig, a block guy. Then I'm gonna go to animation editor. And let's just animate a really crappy punch animation. So I'm just gonna. There we go, crappy punch animation done. I'm gonna add a little bit of like whatever this is. I'm just gonna make it so he does his punch for a little bit longer so the animation doesn't look as bad. Then I'm just gonna set the animation priority to action. I'm gonna name it whatever I want, punch anim. Then you can just publish that to Roblox and your punch animation is done. Just remember to keep the ID from that. You'll want that so you can just take it and then paste it into your animation that's in replicated storage. And now, that is done. We can just make it so the punch works now. It's really easy. So we'll just go to the hit handler. We'll go down and we'll do UIS.input began connect function. And we'll do input as one of the parameters, chatting as the other. Basically, if we do if attack DB equals false and not chatting, and in okay, basically, before I continue, if not chatting. Okay, there's two parameters. Input is whatever key we pressed, and chatting is game process event. I mean, if it's equal to true, the player has their text box open, their chat box or whatever it's called, then yeah, it won't let you attack while your ch uh, text box is open. I keep saying text box, but your chat box. But yeah, so if not and input, whoops, input dot user input type double equals eno dot user input type dot mouse button one then so currently if i just put print i 
every time I click, you'll see something in the... This is future RK. Well, not exactly future RK, but it's the RK that came directly after that failure. Do not set humanoid to be humanoid root part. It doesn't make any sense. We need humanoid. Literally. Okay, that was such a simple fix, and my brain just completely went over it, so the code didn't work. But now if I play test it, every time I click, it will say hi. So we've successfully detected click. And if I open up the chat and click, well, if you click in the chat, that is, it won't detect the click. If you click anywhere else, it will. But if that were like, if I was detecting the key W or something, it went uh, spam in the output every time I pressed it. If you don't use chatting, it will. And you'll beat your friend up while you're trying to text him and just start whooping him. Anyway. Now, since we've already detected that the player has clicked, all we have to do is use our hitbox function. So we'll just do attack DB equals true, because we don't want the player to be able to spam their attacks. And then we'll just do create hitbox char. And if you're trying to reference something that has a space, you just do it like this. Right arm, boom, and then our damage. So I'll do 15. And then how long we want the hitbox to last. I want mine to last 0.2 seconds. So this is the part that the hitbox is going to be attached to. This is how much damage the player is going to take. And this is how long the hitbox lasts for. Then we'll just do hit one anim play cast up weight one. This is our cooldown. And then we'll set attack db equals false and anti spam equals false, which is the second fail safe basically. So if we go into the game and test, if all was done right, you'll see this. And if you hit somebody, they'll take damage. And if you go to the client, I mean a server, they actually took that damage. But if you go to somebody that doesn't have a hitbox, you can't hurt it. Awesome. So that's basically everything you need to know. Now, normally a game doesn't just have the same punch animation. So pretend this is a second animation. We'll do hit two. Just pretend that works. You just add it like this. Just do hit two equals hit two. Then we'll do hit two anim equals hit two. And then in this code, we'll just use that time swung uh, variable. So we'll do if time swung double equals zero, then paste this code and we'll do time swung plus equals one. Else if time swung equals one, then we'll paste all this code. And instead of adding one, we'll just set it to zero. And just so you can see that it's working, we'll do print one, print two. And right here, you just change the animation on the second hit to be hit two anim. Now, if we go and test it, we should see one, two, one, two in order. You should not see one, one, two, two, anything like that. It should go one, two, so one, two, one, two. So if those animations were different, they would show. Bam, we have working hitboxes. It's pretty simple. It's a simple punch, but you know, you gotta get your foot in the door somehow when you're programming combat. And what better than to watch a moron's tutorial while he desperately tries to explain how it works. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, I'm glad. I have horror content out the way. It just takes a long time to record the horror videos because they're very complicated. Unlike this really simple, uh, dumb tutorial. But yeah, thank you guys for your support. Uh being awesome and remember don't forget to brush your teeth bye bye oh i lied this is not the end uh this entire project is just going to be in the description of the video you can download it and use it for free i will be making more tutorials on fighting game type stuff like ultimates and just cool attacks this is just to get you started so yeah uh for real this time bye bye for real don't forget to rush yes